and I was so interested in going to the prom because those things just felt important in those years. <clears throat> so I ended up going to the prom, and, and it was a wonderful time. We all had a, a wonderful time together, me and some friends that went. We all went as sort of a group. Um, so I was never teased about asexuality. And this was back in the late 80s. Um, I graduated high school in the late 80s. So I, I didn't know what asexuality was, and I was too young to really be concerned about it at that point. As I got into my 20s and went into nursing school, I became more and more concerned about I haven't had sex, I, I haven't had boyfriends, what's wrong with me, am I some sort of freak? Am I gay? Am I... What am I? You know, what's wrong with me? Why am I not seeking and pursuing dating and sex and all that other stuff? So, um, it wasn't until... I began to hear, you know, like on TV and stuff about, you know, that guy must be asexual or that guy must be a... Um, you know, just different shows. Uh, Six Feet Under was one show I was watching in the around the the around the turn of the millennium I was watching Six Feet Under a lot it's one of my favorite shows and around season three there was a, a character named Arthur Martin who was played by Rain Wilson and observing him and the way people were responding to his personality and just his presence I begin to realize that some people are just they don't have a they have this vibe about them that isn't, you know, gender queer. Uh, they have a vibe about them where they're just, there's no sexuality that can be detected in the way that they dress or the way they move or talk or anything. There's just, you know, he was the first, I think, character in, on TV that struck me as probably an asexual. Ruth uh, Fisher, who was played by Frances Conroy, was romantically or sexually interested in this young guy and he, she was several several years his senior but when she tried to initiate some kind of romantic slash um, romantic slash sexual relationship with him he was not interested he just clearly was not interested in, in physical contact the closest those two got to physicality is bumping heads together like a couple of horsies. <laughs> so Arthur Martin from Six Feet Under was the first character I realized. Yeah, there are asexual people, and they're being they're beginning to be portrayed. Um, he was he was a little bit on the weird side, and I wasn't really I wasn't sure if the writers were right to make him that way. Uh, they could have made him a little more normal, a little more tolerable. He was a little annoying at times. Uh, the next character I began to see an asexual vibe from was uh, House, but that didn't last long because he, House MD, Hugh Laurie, the character gave me this vibe at first, but then when he was reunited with his old flame, uh, Cela Ward, Stacy. I realized he was not asexual. He's just a curmudgeon. He's just a grouchy, unhappy, bitter man because his, his life didn't turn out the way he w hoped it had. He had lost her. Um, and it, it's explained if you watch the show. Uh, and then he was romantically involved with uh, Dr. Cuddy later on in the show, in the series. So he's not asexual. And then he did it. I didn't, you know what? I don't remember seeing that. Uh, episode where they sort of talked about asexuality. I still have to see that, but that episode made a lot of asexuals very angry because there was a couple that was uh, being presented and asexuality was being discussed and then at the end it turns out it was just a big old like they didn't know what they were talking about. They were sexual and they were just suffering from dysfunction or, you know, physical plumbing problems or some such nonsense, so th that made a lot of people mad, although myself I have not seen that episode and I plan to watch it, and I'll give my opinion later about what I think. 
uh, one of the best examples of an asexual character in recent times is Sheldon Cooper from The Big Bang Theory. Um, I adore him. I love Jim Parsons' portrayal of this character. This character is a genius. He's accomplished. He's uh, amazingly funny without even intending to be. He's just a real... He's not a character. He's a person. Um, and I really love his portrayal. They, they're not even saying anything about his sexuality. They're not naming it. They're not discussing it and pushing it down your throat. They're just simply... His behavior is enough to convince you. I mean, when when Penny asks Sheldon, how are you guys going to have a baby? Or how are you and Amy, Amy uh, Farrah Fowler, how are you guys going to have a child without having sex? And he, and he matter-of-factly tells them, well, we're going to have an artificial procedure done. We're not going to have sex. I mean, why on earth would we have sex was what... Sheldon says and it was just so honest and it was like he was looking at them like why are you guys ask why are you guys crazy why would we have sex he's clearly an asexual uh, in an unaired pilot they suggested he might have had intercourse with one girl at one time but all through I have not seen the, the later seasons yet so he might be changed at this point maybe he and Farah or Amy you know, later on maybe they do decide to be more intimate, but I haven't gotten that far in the series yet. I'm only on season three. I, I'm I'm always way behind everybody else when I watch TV. So he is a very good example. Mr. Spock from Star Trek, well, you know, frankly, he's, he's pretty good uh, by himself for the most part. The only problem he has is every seven years he goes into Pon Far. <laughs> And I love Star Trek. I love I love Mr. Spock as portrayed by Leonard Nimoy and also by uh, Zachary Quinto. Um, so that's a good character that I look to for a good example. Uh, one one movie that I thought was really cute and funny and and just a good comedy was the Forty Year Old Virgin. But I wasn't too crazy about. Uh, he was more of a character, in my in my opinion. He wasn't really an actual solid, human, realistic character. He was just this guy who somehow just didn't, didn't get around to having sex. Why? I don't know. To me, there's always a reason why, and it should have been better explained, or it should have been a, a movie that gave somebody the opportunity to discuss asexuality or something as maybe simple as just lack of arousal, lack of uh, sex, uh, lack of sexual arousal, it might have been a physical disorder, you know. There were so many opportunities to discuss, but they it's basically a comedy and they were really only concentrating on making people laugh. Um, so it was cute as a comedy, but I wouldn't say that it was a real great thing to educate yourself about asexuality with. So, anyway, uh, I didn't get teased. Now, in my family these days, the older I get, the more I get the pity party from family members who think, well, you're just going to die alone and you're going to be unhappy and you're going to be full of regret. And my answer to them is, we come into this world naked. We come into this world completely alone. We have people around us, but we're still pretty much alone. So if I die naked and alone, who gives a crap? If I die in a nursing home with nobody around me except for the, you know, nursing uh, staff, so what? I mean, no matter who you are, you're alone, but you're not alone. There's no reason for anybody to feel pity for me because I don't want it, I don't need it. I'm not asking for anybody to feel sorry for me. I've had friends try to set me up. I've had friends try to preach at me about how it's not right to be alone. I mean, I've even had people, you know, uh, quoting Bible scripture at me, saying, be fruitful and multiply. 
Believe me, this world is overpopulated enough. 